Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Muldog. Today, we're going to look into Death Note Volumes 1-3, to and next week, Volumes 4-6. to Also, check out my list of iconic items and movies. Next week, I'll read my sci-fi short story, The Bridge. You can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for $4.99. Also, for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, the way this is going to work is I will give a recap of... Um, these three volumes, starting with volume one, and after said volume, I'll be giving my thoughts on that volume. If you've uh, heard of uh, my re manga reviews before, you know that they're pretty detail-oriented. This one uh, with Death Note, yeah, I'm mainly going to just go through the bigger plot points, and not be as crazy detailed. Uh, reason being is that it, it's Death Note. I expect that most people who have uh, who know about Death Note have read this manga. And if you have not read this manga series, read it. <laughs> like, um, it is one of the best series out there, in my opinion. Uh, one of my personal favorites, and it has spawned anime and uh, multiple live action movies as well so let's get started volume one we are introduced to ryuk the shinigami who has dropped his death note onto the human world a top high school student like yagami finds it and tests it out uh the death note works and ryuk confronts light and starts to pretty much haunt him he just uh follows him around You'll see him just kind of fly next to him, or over him, and he'll even talk to Light as well. Light is the only one that can see him. Um, after many deaths happen due to Light using the Death Note, Interpol gets involved, and they get L to investigate and try to solve the case. L does not reveal himself to the public or his police colleagues, and pretty much works remotely. He has a guy named Watari to kind of be his messenger, uh, yeah, be his own personal messenger. So people start to call this killer Kira, and Light, who is the killer, obviously, uh, secretly, because, you know, he can't admit to being Kira, uh, accepts and adopts that name. L hatches a scheme that reveals that Kira is in the Kanto region of Japan. It's revealed that Light's father, Soichiro Yagami, leads the Kira, or Kira investigation team, or the task force against them, pretty much. Uh, many officers turn in their letters of resignation due to them fearing that they'll be killed by Kira. All Kira needs is a name, and these officers and just people in general will die, so they're kind of scared for their lives. Um, so... Light is actually suspected and then followed by an FBI agent. Uh, Ryuk tells Light that he can make a deal with him to get a Shinigami's eyes for half his lifespan. The eyes will allow someone to see a human's name and lifespan, but Light refuses. Uh, Light then starts to test different ways uh, and using the Death Note. Like, it, pretty much, it can kind of control people. Uh, the suicide works, um, but, you know, he's also trying other situations that are not humanly possible, and in cases like that, uh, the 
recipient of the death note just gets a heart attack, which is the traditional way that people die. Uh, finally, Light hatches a scheme to find out the name of the FBI agent who has been following him, and his name is Ray Penber. So, uh, thoughts on Volume 1. Uh, the Death Note itself, I mean, how intriguing, just this idea of a book, and if you write a person's name on it, with some other rules applied, you have to actually have the face uh, to that name as well, so, and that way, if someone has the same name, multiple people don't die, so you have to be imagining that person's face as you're uh, writing the name. Um, its power is just uncanny and nearly omnipotent in, in a sense um, and you know I use that word because like Kira slash light kind of considers him as a god you know with this type of power this type of omnipotence um, light Yagami kind of like the perfect person to use the death note if you think about it he's cold, calculating, but he's not the type that will get too razzled by it, um, too freaked out about using it. He has, he actually does have like a moral compass in a sense, like he doesn't kill just for the sake of killing, he's doing it for his own sense of righteousness and justice. Um, he's really smart too extremely large sense of justice and just really believes in what he's doing um, they do delve into the fact that like most humans would freak out uh, light did he said he wasn't getting sleep and whatnot when he found out about the death note and um, you know it, it's really crazy just how I guess humanistic this story can be it I guess is the word I want to use just in, in the way the reasoning and, and the way the death notes being used the reasoning why it's used who's using it who's the vi who are the victims and whatnot uh, I find Ryuk the Shin Shinigami to be pretty funny he's kind of like a jester like character I believe he would be like the clown that you'd see in movies, media, plays, or whatnot. He's pretty much a clown character. He's there, sometimes helps, but he's kind of kind of a pest too. Um, he's something of a pet <laughs> to uh, Light at this point. You know, he just seemingly kind of follows and haunts Light. You know, he just follows him around. Um, there's also L. He's pretty much a, a mystery. We know that he's very smart, very in intuitive. And he's, as far as we can tell so far, he seemingly makes a good foil for Light at the moment. He seems to be able to match his in his intellect, his wit, um, his ability to just think in a different way. Uh, I also... Uh, we are also introduced to Light's dad, Soichiro Yagami. Seems like a good, upstanding person. Just one of the good guys, you know? It's like he sees Kira. He's unlawful. He's what he's doing. Yagami, or, yeah, uh, Chief Yagami seems like he's evil. And, you know, put, wants to put a stop to him at the risk of his own life, you know? And is really unwavering about that. Um, there's huge moral issues with this story, obviously. And it's one of the prevalent things with the whole concept of, de of the Death Note. You know, pretty much it asks the question of like, is what Light doing with the Death Note truly bad or evil? You know, is it good? It's going to stop crime at the expense of killing people who are not the, I guess, best people of the human race. <laughs> um, you know, it really can't be argued 
that it, it is against the law because obviously light is doing what is against the law and is unlawful. But the argument then becomes whether it's good for humanity in general. And, you know, that's tackled here by the fact that, like, the name Kira was invented because these people want to support what light is doing and yet they want to do it behind closed doors so they made up this Kira guy or didn't really make him up but they call this person Kira and seem to support what he's doing obviously there are others that don't and you know one thing about light and L that make them good foils for each other they're always hatching schemes you know L got the, kind of the better of light by discovering that Kira is in Japan in the Kanto region. You know, I kind of expect that this type of like one-upsmanship to pretty much prevail throughout the whole series. So, volume two, uh, Ray Penberg gets away from a crime scene and we're introduced to his fiance, who used to work in the FBI. Uh, the crime scene was actually pretty much shut up by light uh, and the death note and the way he used the death note so apparently Kira killed 12 FBI agents including Ray Penber <coughs> excuse me light tells his father that he swears that Kira will get the death penalty he also recalls how he killed Ray Penber and how he got the names of the FBI agents um only uh, five members and Chief Yagami decided to stay and continue with the task force's uh, investigation of Kira. The task force then meets L in person and they work together. So now we finally get to see L, what he looks like, how he acts and operates in person. Uh, Light then runs into Ray Penber's fiance, who was looking into the Kira investigation. He gets her to reveal her name, Naomi Misora, and uses a death note to make her commit suicide in a place where she will not get discovered. The task force looks into the FBI murders and watches surveillance video of Ray Penber's death. Al finds a few things out of place, like him holding, like in. He's holding this envelope, and they kind of wonder, like, what's he doing with that thing? And then it, it's, like, gone, too. L tells the task force that he'd like to place bugs and hidden cameras in the homes of Deputy Director General Kitamura and Detective Superintendent Yagami. Uh, as L suspects that the person that would have information to make these type of killings to know who these criminals are who know who these FBI agents are would be the families of high-ranking officials such as Kitamura and Yagami uh, Chief Yagami, Soichiro Yagami, Light's dad agrees and insists that he goes all the way with this so Light comes home and finds out that his house was broken into and that there may have bugs and cameras uh, set up around his house uh, in the last part of the volume, he convinces Ryuk to check to uh, see where all the uh, cameras are. So, some thoughts on volume two. So, the task force and Al have assembled, and they are pretty much what's left to fight against Kira. They seem to be the most noble of the bunch of police officers, as Kira is, as all Kira needs to know is their names to kill them. So, there's a lot, I mean... You had to be brave to be a police officer, but these ones, since it's just so easy to pick them off, um, you know, it they're kind of shown as braver than most. Um, they got a good team, you know. L obviously is gonna be like the head guy, but um, Light's father, upstanding uh, officer, you know, superintendent and whatnot. Highly respected, strong guy. Um, you know, so they, they got some capable people in that team. Uh, speaking of teams, though, these FBI agents didn't get it so well. Uh, Ray Penber, unfortunate victim who just got played by light. 
it, it really goes to show that light at this point is definitely a notch above even an FBI agent. Like, light is like this smart and this cunning to be able to do this and to just trick a guy this badly. Uh, it also just shows, you know, the killing of those 12 FBI agents shows just how dangerous Kira slash, slash Light can be when he's threatened. They easily got killed by a scheme hatched by Light. But that also signifies that Light um, will kill relatively innocent people for his own gain. I mean, these aren't criminals. See, these are just guys that were investigating him. And they all got killed uh, by light. So he is not afraid to... I mean, you know, he. it really goes to show that light will just do what he needs to do in order to become Kira, you know, fully become Kira and to pretty much change the world and shape the world as he sees fit. Uh, you know, Naomi Misora was just another unfortunate victim of Light and someone who got played by Light. You know, she seemed smart and capable. Light was just one step ahead, you know. Um, Light's a good actor. <laughs> you know, he, he has ways of convincing people uh, to do what he wants them to do and tricking them. And uh, Naomi just fell for it and, you know, she got killed. Uh, and finally, you know, they're bugging the place. They're placing hidden cameras all over uh, the Yagami household. And it'll really show the extent that L will go to find Kira. Um, it kind of also shows that L is at least on the right track or at least the right state of mind. Has the right idea as to who Kira could be. And goes to show how smart he is. Because he's not just doing it for like every everyone in the task force he, he he manages to narrow down who it could be who's smart enough um well not really smart enough but like which families have access to certain things that maybe a higher up police officer or whatnot w would have so i was pretty smart you know he he knows what he's doing for sure so volume three, Ryuk finds all the cameras in Light's room. I think it's sixty something cameras. Uh, hiding a miniature L C D television inside of a potato chip bag. I believe it was barbecue potato chips. Light uses the death note as he studies. So like Light or excuse me, L and Light's dad are pretty much just watching him on tape. And it looks like he's just studying, but he's actually he has found a way to use the death note as he studies to make it seem like nothing's out, you know, like he's innocent. L concludes that no suspicious activity was observed, so they removed the bugs and hidden cameras. Um, later, we see Light taking a test. Looks like it's a college entrance test or something like that. And a strange person sits a couple rows behind him. So this was a test for the To'o University, to get into To'o University apparently. So at the To'o University entrance ceremony, the strange person from the test, who calls himself Hideki Ryuga, who's actually a famous person in Japan, tells Light that he is L. Uh, Light then goes home and feels Utterly humiliated. He, tell, he tells Ryuk that he'll make Al trust him, but it will eventually kill him. Light and Al then have a tennis match against each other. Light wins. Al tells Light that he suspects him of being Kira, but only by a factor of 1%. He still suspects him, though. Al tells him that he has brilliant powers of deduction and wants to to ask him to help in the investigation. Light and Al go to a coffee shop and Al starts to test his reasoning abilities. Light, of course, does very well. Both Al and Light get a phone call telling them that Light's father, Soichiro, uh, got a heart attack. Uh, they both suspect it's Kyra, or Kira, excuse me. They visit him at the hospital and he is actually fine. He didn't die. 
He also verifies that um, this person who called himself L is indeed L. So Light was a bit suspicious if this person, really strange guy, he's calling himself L is indeed L, not some proxy or something like that. But Light's father does confirm it for uh, Light. So, elsewhere, four videotapes get sent to uh, Sakura TV with a letter from Kira. Sakura TV plays uh, the first one of these videotapes, and they're set. And the next ones are set to play in uh, subsequent times, uh, or in different times. Excuse me, subsequently. <laughs> so, Ukita from the task force goes to the TV station. And at the front door of the TV station, he dies suddenly. Um, Light's father, just come so, or Chief Yagami is what I'll call him from now on, leaves the hospital in a van, and he crashes through the front door of the Sakura TV broadcast station. Uh, he gets them to stop playing the tapes and takes all the tapes and other evidence, like the envelope they were sent in. He returns to uh, uh, the task force headquarters with the evidence. Light and Ryuk wants to broadcast, but it's revealed that it's, you know, the Kira that is in this broadcast is not Light. Um, Light concludes that it's another Shinigami and another Kira. He also concludes that this Kira has the Shinigami eyes. L also surmises that there is a second Kira, as he just, as he feels that the first Kira doesn't work in this in this manner and finally we're shown a girl named Misa talking with the Shinigami she wanted to get the real Kira's attention so some thoughts on volume 3 so we got this second Kira new wrinkle to the story um, we're shown this girl Misa we assume is this uh, second Kira well, it'll be very interesting to see how she'll play into this whole story how L and Light will like deal with her, you know, and in Light's case, maybe work with her, um, because you know, he knows about Shinigami, he knows about the Death Note, L doesn't know about that, so and it seems like this Misa person really wanted to get Light's attention, anyways. Um, L meeting Light, uh, was and revealing himself to be L was a pretty bold move you know uh, you know he's not admitting his name but it's still something that is could have potentially be, been somewhat dangerous for Al obviously Light doesn't just blatantly murder people he'll do it through the death note they definitely have a strange relationship though um, you know they're both really smart they're both have insane reasoning abilities you know in another reality they look like they could maybe be some sort of like odd, have some odd couple friendship you know where it's just like this light is this like upstanding top student dresses to impress and whatnot whereas L is this total weird looking guy acts very weird he sits very weird um it, he, he's very much different and than light in the way that they present themselves. Um, you know, Ella might just have this game of cat and mouse that's pretty, very interesting. And now that Ella suspects light, um, you know, no matter how little percent it, it is, uh, there's always going to have this cat and mouse thing going on it's not it's not like I was it's doubtful that I was gonna stop suspecting light of being Kira anytime soon uh, you know them being so different it, it seems as if light though the difference with light and L is that light seemingly just has an ego problem he has a huge ego and when it's broken like when he got humiliated or felt he got humiliated by L um, you know, he just freaked out. It could potentially be his undoing, too. It's something, L doesn't seem to have that type of ego thing. 
kind of, he, he almost looks like he takes things in stride, and, and just the way he carries himself seems to be that way too. Uh, he doesn't really seem to get riled up, nor does he look like he's, like, like light sometimes, his outward appearance, well, it doesn't look like he is pretty much putting on a facade as this perfect student, you know? L is not doing that, <laughs> you know, he's just like, this is who I am, this is how I dress, this is how I sit, this is how I talk. You know, deal with it. Light's just like, I better put on this face, these clothes, this attitude, present myself in a certain way. Uh, you know, these two had that tennis match. That was a lot of fun. It was neat seeing them making, like, these, like, assumptions and conjectures about each other as a match was going on. It also just further shows that Light just hates losing. Uh, Light's father, you know, stormed into the uh, Sakura TV broadcast station. Pretty awesome, you know. You, you can kind of see where Light gets his, like, sense of justice from. You know, this guy it, is just a pretty upstanding, like, officer. Um, and it seem, seeming like an upstanding person, really. Um, would not surprise me if Light got a little bit of that from his father. Um, Light, though, you know, he, finding a way to use a Death Note despite all the cameras in his room was pretty ingenious. Um, he kind of seems like the type of person with something to prove. But, like, doing that was also just tactical as well. You know, it's just kind of like, if I can show them that people are dying, despite the fact that I'm just sitting here studying, that that should, you know, relieve me, you know relieve light of any suspicion of course l is still suspicious of him but also just kind of seemed like when you read it, it seemed like he really just needed to prove something to l like i can outsmart you you know in some way shape or form and he kind of did here so that's all for today if you like this don't forget to subscribe share and comment to this channel if you're on youtube or follow share and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on soundcloud if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to these manga reviews. Next week, I will review Death Note Volumes 4-6 to and read my sci-fi story, uh, short story, The Bridge. Thank you, and until next time.